She's a local artist and a professor with her work being exhibited right now at the Triton Museum in the city of Santa Clara. With us here in Comunidad del Valle is local artist and professor Consuelo Jimenez Underwood. Welcome to the show. Uh, and you Gracias. brought some uh, some of your artwork here to the to the show, uh, but uh, you you want to talk about the, también about your uh, Triton Museum exhibition. That's the most important. It's thought provoking. Tell us about it briefly. Uh, it's the show that uh, brings together 30 years of making art, and it's finally I got the message of how to talk to people beyond my my world. Mm -hmm. I want I, 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 it, the work speaks to the young people. It speaks to people who don't even know anything about Mexico or the borderland. And what is this here? We're looking at the... This is the undocumented border flowers. And these are the, the state border flowers of uh, Texas, California, mm. Arizona, New Mexico. And they grow on both sides of that border line that you see there. There's Tejas, there's California. And these flowers grow on both sides and, they don't, and they're not documented. So <laughs> they don't know what to do. What do you want... Uh because you have your own impression of what you're, what you're uh, painting here. What do you want the, the guest, the viewer, to, to go home with? I want them to go there? home to think about their children and their children's children and think about that borderline and how it's devastating our environment. Hmm. I, I mentioned to you before uh, we started taping about our interview with uh, Jose Hernandez, the astronaut, and I asked him what it was like to look at the Earth from up in space without any borders, and his answer was just fascinating. Um, your thoughts, I mean, it's, it's kind of the same message that, that you're sending here with your art. Exactly, because I think the world is now inundated, we're being killed with these border issues, and it's not just Mexico and the United States, it's the whole world that is being um, slammed. Uh, the young people have no hope. Mm -hmm. There are border lines in every part of our world, in our society, even in our own families. We have to be able to be, go beyond that. Like that's what Coyle said, we're here to make flowers and songs. We're not here to divide and conquer and bring, get our resume to the th highest that we can go. How, how easy or difficult is it to, to send your message via the art. I mean, you do it, you do it in, a, in a great way there with, with, with that one uh, artwork uh, on the border flowers. It's, it's so easy now mm -hmm. because I've been doing it for 30 years. I've struggled of how to get my message across so that it does not alienate people, but rather bring them into this world of unity of flowers without borders. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want people to go into that show and I think once they see the work, They'll get it. They'll understand. This is silly. This thing about yours and mine, Mexico and the U.S., it's America. It's the Southlands. It's the world of flowers. And we have to learn how to live with each other and the flowers. But right now, we're just crushing those flowers. Mm -hmm. That border on our Americas is creating a Sahara Desert in two or three generations. We're going to have a giant Sahara Desert in the Americas. I don't like that. I don't like that for our flowers. I don't like that for my children. I don't like that for your great-grandchildren. we got to stop it. we got to learn to do what Rodney Keene said, which was, can't we all just get along? Mm -hmm. What is so hard? That's my thing. And with that message, again, how easy or difficult was it to convince uh, an institution like the Triton uh, to display your work and to talk about some of these issues that might be uh, thorny, pardon the pun? It's very difficult. That has been most of my struggle as an artist has not been to create great artwork. It's been how to get into these museums. How do you, you get into this higher art world? Now that I kind of know how to do it, I'm so excited. And the most important thing for me now is Having, how do you get people c to come in and see this work? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that you gave me this opportunity to kind of rant and rave about, come on, folks, the world is falling apart here. Mm -hmm. And it's because of our notion that this is yours and this is mine. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's everybody's. And, and so some of this uh, embroidery here is some of your initial artwork when you were yes. first breaking into it? Yes. This is uh, right. the work that, uh, that uh, I made back in the 70s when I was trying to figure out how do you make this weaving, this folk craft, into an art form that can go into the high museums. It took me 30 years. But now I can make these weavings and whatever these, these, these objects that I'm making to, again, 
re reinforce the idea, but let's get along, people. It's the land of flowers. It's not the land of people, you know? A and as a professor, do you think that your message maybe alienates some students or maybe it draws them? Uh, well, I have to clarify that because I retired early. I got the promotion. I got the tenure uh, full time. And then I said, it's time to go mm. because it's time to do my own art. So how was it then? Do you oh, it was incredible. I, I, my every first class, I told them, you know, you have to learn how to do thread work. It is the most basic human way to to convey to one another who we are and what we do with mm -hmm. our clothing, with our threads. So I always gave them the philosophy as well as the process of how to take a plant and make it into a thread with color and finally into an object that may convey some kind of power, whether it be personal or for the environment. What, what's next for you? Is this a traveling thing for you? Or are you happy? Oh with my gosh, I feel I've always started to, when I became an artist, I wanted to be a footnote. Mm. I'm a footnote. My work is now in the Smithsonian. So I'm now in history. So everything now is kind of like dessert, which means for me, we'll keep on continuing weaving rebosos for our mothers. Nobody has woven a, 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 a reboso for the moon, for the ocean, for the Virgen de Guadalupe. They're in the show. Mm -hmm. The one for the Virgen de Guadalupe, they're made with gold threads from Japan because they cut down their kimono studios that they used to make with silver and gold threads. Wow. So I wove one for the Virgen de Guadalupe. I wove one for our five mothers, the ocean, the earth, Earth, the moon, and our real mother, and the Virgen de Guadalupe. Those are in the show too. And, and I, I want to keep making them for I mean, her. By being a part of the Smithsonian exhibition, you're part of the American fabric now. This is uh, oh. one, if we can go and hold it. Right. Uh, this is uh, what you have displayed right now at the Triton? Yes, this is one of this is I mean, It's the American feet. flag. Tell us what's on it. It's a four feet by seven feet, and it's basically, uh, the, I call it one nation underground, where if you live in this area, it's the same. And if you look at my work, if you go to the exhibition, you'll see how similar both sides are mm. and how wonderful that is. It's not something to be terrified and be angered about and let's make it worse. You know, it's about unity. This is about the flag, the Mexican, the U.S. Uh, they're together. They're one nation. There's this line, a borderline of, of uh, barbed wire. That separates it. One nation underground. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much. We have your website that we want to put up. Uh, if you would uh, like to uh, log on, there again, exhibition at the Trite Museum here uh, down the street in Santa Clara Consuelo, Jimenez Underwood. Thank you so much for your knowledge. Thank you. All right, then.